I love you. Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be um, playing with some molds. And I did a video the other day where I kind of did an unboxing of this 3D pen that I received, that I purchased. I didn't receive it, I purchased it. And so today I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and have some fun with it and show you guys more or less the different things that you can create. I've also gone ahead and prepped a little canvas here. I've just done some, I've done some stenciling with some modeling paste. And I used uh, this Andy Skinner stencil. It's called uh, Shedded. So it's like a snake skin type of uh, design. Hello, hello, Janet. How are you doing, darling? And so pretty much I'm going to be attempting to get some of these pieces done. And also go ahead and share with you guys, um, you know, a canvas. I've got this drying. I've let it kind of air dry. So hopefully it'll be ready by the time that I go ahead and get, you know, some of this thing going. So we're going to give it a few minutes for people to kind of join in because I don't think that my notifications are going out properly. Because for some reason, when I went to see it, it said that I still had three hours to go before my live stream started. So I don't know if they got me like in some different country, you know, time. You got it? Okay, cool. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah. So I got my little intelligent pen. And it's this pen right here. And I actually had to go ahead and order um, some more of these plastics because the original plastic that I got with it, I'm going to bring a package just to kind of show you guys. Um, well, I'll leave this one here so you guys can see the name. Like the, the plastic that came with the pen itself was this brand, uh, was this type, PCL, which was perfect. It was the perfect plastic for making molds. Um, this one, on the other hand, which I think is PLA, yeah, it's PLA or ABS. That's a different kind of plastic. And that's the kind of plastic that you use mostly for creating um, dimensional pieces, like actual 3D pieces. Like um, I have this little thing that I was playing with. Um, and you can actually create all different kinds of shapes and stuff like that with this kind of uh, filament, because that's what it's called. It's called um, 3D pen filament. So um, I went ahead and ordered what will be good for me to use with uh, with these. And I ordered a small sampler pack because I just wanted to make sure that that was the kind that I should be using to make molds because they're very different um, in how they are. Hi, Angela. Like this is um, a really hard. So I have one that's open. Yeah, I have one that's open. Like this is a really hard kind of plastic. This is ABS. So this is a really hard kind of plastic. And this one's actually very flexible. Like you can actually move the packaging back and forth. This one, you can, it doesn't really flex so much. Um, and when it melts, it melts really nice and smooth. So you actually, it all blends together and you don't get like, um, it just doesn't look weird. Um, I tried doing it with this one. And even though it did go into the mold fine, it dries really, really fast. So it actually doesn't make a very good, it's not good for molds. Um, not at all, actually. <laughs> not at all. Um, so I'm going to be doing other things with this kind of plastic. So I'm like, you know what? I'm in this mold kind of frenzy. And I made, let me put some of these things away. I did. I threw this all down for the thumbnail. Because <laughs> it, it makes a thumbnail. Yes, I did. And I actually filmed it. So I'm going to be putting that video up. If not today, most likely tomorrow, because I was filming another entry as well. But yours is the next one coming up. So yay. Thank you so much. I did get it. And I loved it. <laughs> yes. Very good to know the info because there's the letters can be confusing, you know, like um, you know, between the PCL and the A and the PLS and the ABS, like it's very confusing. But pretty much this is the only one that's different. It's the PCL. Um, it's the only one that's different. And this is no odor 
and it burns at low temperatures. So you don't have to burn it at really high temperatures. The other one you have to burn it at high temperature. Um, and it can emit a little bit of a, a, a slight odor. It's not even that bad, but it does. You can smell a little bit of it. This one, you don't smell nothing. So like if your nose is very sensitive, um, you know, to those kinds of fumes and stuff like that, then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it with this. So um, these are some of the pieces. And here, actually, I saved the ones that I had made earlier. Um, so this piece right here, let's see if I find something that I can kind of, uh, okay. maybe I can use that for now. So this one right here, this is made with this kind of, the, the one that I just ordered, the PCL um, brands, or not brands, but type of um, filament. And it does a really nice, um, smooth cast. It captures whatever detail is in your mold perfectly. No issues at all. And because you're using a small, you know, you're using the little gun to do it, you actually are able to get into all of the little nooks and crannies with no, no problem at all. When I used um, the other one, the other type of the plastic, my molds look hella crazy. <laughs> they look hella crazy. You get all of these because it dries so fast. So the, the plastic doesn't have a time to like really capture like the details nicely like yeah it caught the grooves and stuff like that but you also kind of get you know like the pouring of it like how it squeezes out you get some of that kind of that that twirly plasticky kind of look to it which i guess is fine for some things but not really you could even see like here in the back like you can see how the plastic is just like all ridiculous um but if you look at the other one you'll see that it's nice and smooth besides what I painted on it, but you see that it's nice and smooth. Um, so it's really cool. And it's a nice alternative for having to use like resin or anything else like that. Because what happened is this, and I'm sorry if I'm talking at a mile a minute, but I want to get to this at some time. Hi, Debbie. What happened with me was this. I bought the Prima paper clay. Um, which is an awesome product. I don't have, you know, I don't want to knock the product. The product is good. But what happened to me is this, is that when I was letting them dry, they were breaking. Um, like they would break. Like right in the mold, like I will literally use the molds, right? Like I have a Prima mold right here. I will leave it in there and I will set it somewhere stable and I would just leave it, set it and forget it, right? And then when I would go check like the next day, like they were all cracked, like they were all cracked. And I was just so upset because it's like wasting product. Um, like for some other things, I guess they're okay. Like if you were going to do like, um, like these are like little cabochon pieces, these would probably be okay. And they probably wouldn't break on you. Um, cause I were, I was able to cast like some of these rounder ones, um, with no issue and they dry really nice. They caught the impression really, really nicely. I tried different things. Like I tried, um, you know, wetting it up a little bit more, adding a little bit more water and putting it in the mold. Um, like I tried a whole bunch of different things. I even like tried smoothing it all out and all of that. And it still would crack. It didn't matter what I did. Then you are lucky, Debbie. <laughs> you are lucky. Now it didn't happen to all of them, but it did happen to a good 80% of them. Now, I don't know if it may be that I was cleaning the mold too much. Like I was, um, I was making sure that it was nice and clean so that when I took the pieces out, I didn't have to go too crazy. Like, I don't know if you have to leave it like, you know, a pile and cover the whole thing and then like go into it with some tools or something and start cleaning edges. Like I didn't do any of that. I pretty much just, when I would fill in my little cavities here, I would just make sure that, you know, it was nice and clean like around the edges. So I got the perfect impression. But especially like with the keys, not so much with the, with these, not so much with the keyholes themselves, but definitely all my keys kept breaking. Like, I mean, they're still breaking in my hands right now as we speak. Like, I try to even glue them back together, and that was just like, no, not working too well. But other little pieces like butterflies, those things came out okay. Um, I even got like a little row of roses. It warped a little bit, and I think it did crack here, but that wasn't too bad. I can, you know, go ahead and still use that. But just some of the other ones wasn't working for me. This is a fairy that I got, um, and this one did okay overall. And like this rose one here did nice. So I don't know if it's maybe that it's just too thin here in this area, and maybe that's why it didn't work so well because it's too thin. And as 
the clay goes drying um, and it goes evaporating, you know, it's, it changes, the size changes. So I don't know if it is that because it's got this part here and then you have the key area here that somehow the pressure from it being in this cavity makes it snap. Um, that's the only thing that I could think of. Because like I said, with these that are kind of evened out, I mean, even though they're bigger pieces, they're kind of leveled out. It's all white area. Didn't happen so much here, unless it was like my mistake when I went to pop it out and then I snapped it. But these actually snapped before I could even pull them out of the molds. So, ah, see? So yes, um, you're gonna have to be careful with your with your actual keys when you go use your actual keys. So I was really fed up because I, I do want to like, you know, I want some pieces. Come on. I, I use them in all kinds of things. Now this here came out pretty cool, but it did snap in half again um, because as it goes warping, because it's going around an area here and it starts to change, the size starts to change as it starts to um, dry out, they can snap in different places. I mean, that's my experience. I'm not sure if it happens to everybody else, but that's kind of what I went through. So. That kind of got me thinking because I started seeing like 3D printing pens, you know, people doing like different stuff with them. And mostly they were building 3D models like SpongeBob's and all different kinds of stuff. I mean, super, super cool, you know, to watch. Um, but then I started thinking, I'm like, that melted plastic, like I can do so many things with that melted plastic. Like that is such a cool thing. It's not even so much about building, you know, 3D things like houses and trees and so on and so forth. If I can fill my molds with those, like what? So this piece right here is plastic. And I have just sold it. Let me get my black piece of paper back out. Yeah, I have just sold it. I don't know if it shows well, maybe on the white. I've just sold it all up and then I went into it with paint and some of the, um, the gold kind of face, but if you can see, like it really captures all the details nicely. Um, I got like little wings. This is one of the keyholes. These are all plastic pieces. And what's good is that you can drop it. If your pieces drop to the floor, they're not gonna break in half. Um, so after you did all that work and did all that waiting, they're not gonna break. And I bought this, you guys, nobody, I'm not endorsed by no company. I'm just, you know how it is when you get excited about something that you try, you're like, I gotta show everybody. And these are my keys, you guys, perfectly solid, perfectly solid. So I always share when I come up with, when I come across something that I feel can be beneficial to most. Um, and again, not knocking the clay because it does work. Um, it has its applications. I just don't think that for small, uh, very thin type pieces, it's going to work as well as it should, which is my little issue. But I'm still going to keep working with it and seeing. Um, you know, if I could figure out any fixes with that situation there. So I'm going to go ahead and warm up my gun, not my gun, my um, pen. Where did I put it? Here it is. It is a very light. It doesn't weigh nothing. Um, and they have them for all different prices. I've come across them as cheap as 13 bucks. So you can find them for all different prices. And even if they say that they're like um, the other two initials, which is the P. PLS or the ABS, you can still use this, which is the PCL. And I'm going to leave that information down below. So if anything you want to find out information about this and this, just come back to the video after because I'll put all the information of the what to buy for molds and the what not to buy for molds. Um, but you can find this really, really cheap. They even sell it coming from China, which you can get it even cheaper. Um, and it's pretty much the same thing. This right here, this whole piece right here is completely replaceable and they sell it for as little as three bucks to replace that part. Super cheap. This is USB right here. So if you have a phone charger, you are pretty much good to go. Um, so yes. So who's in the room? Hi, Maddie. Hi, Tanya. So yes. So we're going to definitely get this going. And hopefully, I'll get to incorporate it into a canvas so that you guys can see, um, you know, see it at, in action, see it at work. Now, while I let this kind of warm up, um, I did do like a little overview video. So if you want to see more information or hear more information about it, you could check that out. Um, but this pretty much lights up red while it's still warming up. Um, once it gets warm, it'll light up green. 
And this is your button right here to kind of release um, the plastic out. And then you just press it again when you want to stop it. And then in order to make the molds work for you the best way, you're definitely going to need um, some little finger protectors because you do kind of have to, you know, smooth it in and push it into place. Um, this is what it came with, but I can't rely on that. So <laughs> I got these right here that um, Janet sent me. So I'm going to use those. And then I'll just let that kind of um, go ahead and warm itself up. It does warm up rather quickly. And again, it doesn't matter what color filament you get because most of us are going to be just doing over it. Now, if you are into making jewelry and stuff like that, then you can order different colors. You can make unicorn rainbows. You can make all different kinds of colors. You can, um, you know, feed different colors into it, like feed one spot and then feed a different color and create like a whole rainbow or an ombre effect. Like you could do so many different things with this. Um, you could even create like little pieces, like for those of you ladies that do like nail art and stuff like that, um, you can even create like little pieces for your nail art, you know, little tiny flowers, butterflies, so on and so forth, you know, in plastic and so many, so many uses. And one thing I did notice throughout all the videos that I watched on YouTube, as far as using this tool, none of them were really, um, None of them were really about like this kind of stuff. Um, they were mostly about building 3D, you know, 3D items because that's what it's for. Um, but I thought, you know what, how cool would it be to kind of bring this on the other side of the fence? Always finding more than one way to use something. Um, you get two. When you buy the pen, you get the pen, you get the US, you get the cable, right? You don't get the box that plugs into the wall but you do get the cable that plugs into this, right? And it'll tell you the wattage, so on and so forth. You get the two finger protectors and you get two packages of the plastic filament. And the, actually the one that it comes with is, is this one, the PCL brand. And if I would have known that it was gonna work so well with mold, I probably wouldn't have wasted so much of it when I first got it. Um, <laughs> But I think overall with time, once you get this going, this is definitely gonna save you money and time because you don't have to make a whole bunch of pieces and let them dry. You can just literally work in little batches as you're creating and not have to store so many things at the same time. Like granted, you'll have to store your filaments, but as far as everything else, like you can literally take some time and do these or you can do them as you go. Um, and again, they don't break when they fall. So, and they dry super fast within like a minute or two they're completely dry and then you could just play with them and do what you wish so my light turned off i'm going to click it again and this is pretty much now going to get the pen ready for me to be able to feed some filament into it i'm going to open up a pack and i'm going to use some red and for me the color doesn't really matter because i'm going to adjust to it anyway um so i don't care what the back of it looks like because it's Nine out of 10 is gonna get stuck behind, it's gonna get stuck on a canvas or on something else. Um, so pretty cool. And like what's cool about this is because it's plastic and plastic sticks to plastic. So like for all you people that are now doing like embellishment boxes and stuff like that, um, you can actually use some of the same plastic to kind of stick your pieces on because it'll stick the plastic to plastic. So that's also something that you can do. But yeah, this plastic is um, very, very, flexible and it burns at low heat so the other one's not so flexible i mean even when it's dry you can see that it's uh pretty hard i am gonna play with this my daughter has been having a ball using up she's like oh you don't need it i'm like i need it <laughs> you can play with it but don't use it all but yes i know it's super cool i just bumped into it that'd be like literally um maybe like a month and a half, two months ago. And I like, I don't even know how I bumped into it because I wasn't looking for it. I didn't even know that something like this existed. I was like, what? You can make your own stuff at home. So I'm like, oh my God. So I got completely stuck because I like doing dimensional art and assemblages and stuff like that. So I like seeing those things that like, come into life. Um, and I was just like in love, in love, in love. So what you're going to do is there's a little hole back here. And you're gonna pretty much push your filament through and you're gonna push that button and you're gonna see it start to kind of feed. That green right there is, 
from the one that was in it before for my daughter playing. So let me just get rid of that. And when I see the red start coming out, then I will go ahead and stop it. So as you can, there was a teeny little bit in there and it makes all that like, so it does stretch out. It goes really, really far. There we go. So I stopped it. And this one, as you can see, I can already pick it up because this plastic dries really, really fast. Um, this is why it's not good for making molds because it just dries too quick. You can't, you don't have time to get a really good impression. So let's start with a little one and work our way up. Let's make some wings. And I'm just gonna get a whole bunch of different little pieces here. And what I like to do, which is what I've seen others do, is kind of put the thing through their wrist there. Or you could just put it kind of like on the side. And then you start feeding. As long as your light is green, you can go. So now I'm going to go ahead and start in the very teeny. So I'm going to put the, the nose right into it. And I'm going to start in the very teeny end. And I'm going to get my little finger dabber ready. Because as it's going in, I'm going to squeeze that in so that it fills in all of the different little cavities all of the little nooks and cranny so that I get a very nice impression. And I wish that this thing had some kind of camera control so that I can zoom in, but I will try to show you. It stays warmer longer, so you're able to still, even after the fact, um, play with it a little bit. So if they say you let this kind of... Um, dry for a few like a minute or two and it's still a little flexible you could actually put it over a curved surface and um even add more dimension and more curve to it so this is about done and all i do now is just squeeze this in and pretty much my piece is there now if you want to give it shape you can go ahead and maybe even tape this to something and then your, your, your shape will come out curved. I'm not going to do that because I want my wings straight. Um, but then you just go on to the next one and it could be a little bit of a, of a process. I guess pushing the clay into its place is a little bit easier. But when you think about the fact that you still have to clean around the clay, you still have to clean up all the edges. If you're dealing with um, resin, then you have to shave all of those things down. You got to go through all those additional steps. With using this, you really don't have to go through the steps because you're going right into the cavity. You're only putting in exactly the amount that you need and there's really no cleanup afterwards. So let's go into this. And you can make them as, you know, you can make them thinner. You don't have to fill the entire space in. You can make them thinner if you want. You don't want to waste so much of that. It's completely up to you. Once the plastic dries, you're good to go either way. And just use your little finger protectors to kind of smush it into place. And it makes a little bit of a noise, but it's not even that loud. And then you just stop it and just tap it down. Let that one dry and move on to your next piece. So you can do like, if you're doing a whole bunch of different pieces um, or different embellishments and you could just keep moving, just keep filling them in and keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and do some of these. These are like little fairy um, cabochons. So I'm gonna use it on this right here. You should, you should definitely invest in one. I'll be honest with you, you should definitely invest with one because most of us are either baking our pieces or waiting a really, really long time. Time is money, you guys, right? The pen is not that expensive and neither is this. You can buy the boxes that, that bring like, you know, 200 and something, 600 and something feet of this stuff. Like there's different um, packages that you can get, different sizes. You can find it on Amazon, eBay, and pretty much all of those other um, places. You just gotta make sure that it's PCL. Like, that's the only thing that I would say. 
because the other ones just will not mold properly. They won't fit into your mold the way that you want it to fit. Um, you're going to get a lot of texture. And it's not that hot. So it's actually safe. Like if you have children that want to play with this, you actually can let them play with this. Not the other ones. The other ones burn really, really hot. Um, it has to get really hot in order for it to melt. So those are not so safe. Um, but this one is not too bad. It's less than 100 degrees. It's like between 70 and 100 degrees is the melting point. So what I haven't done and what I want to try to see if like, let's say I mess one up, if I could stick it in the microwave and I want to see if it'll actually um, get soft to the point that I could remold it again. But so far, I haven't had none of my pieces like really mess up to that point where I have to kind of like figure that out. But yes. So you could definitely get a lot of pieces um, out of this. I mean, obviously, depending on the size, you can also just cast specific parts. So like, um, like this cameo, for example, it has like a little angel. If I wanted to just cast like this little angel, it might not be as easy to just cast a little angel, but you can definitely cast just like, you know, this part of it. You don't have to cast the entire thing. Um, these are ready to go. So it's as fast as that, like literally a few minutes, not even maybe like two minutes tops and your piece is ready to go. And if you hit it probably with a heat tool, like really, really quick, you could probably get it to just like flex a little bit and then you could just, you know, change the shape of it if you want. But pretty cool, pretty simple. <laughs> so that's why I figured I'm like, you know what I got to, um, I got to share this with you guys because again, don't worry about the noise. That's just it uh, pretty much going off. So if it goes off, you just have to um, click it and it'll turn right back on. This right here is like a pedal, which I haven't tried yet. But I do want to try and see if I can mold some pedals out of this. I'm going to put this on this side. That string can be a little bit annoying, but if you want to work in pieces, then you could just cut it off. You know, you don't want to have the whole cordage just hanging there. Just cut the piece off and then just use, um, you know, what you want to use. And you might hear it pop a little bit. That's just the plastic. It's nothing, it's nothing is breaking or anything like that. Um, but the plastic might pop here and there. I'm going to try to feed it through this little section right here. I'm not going to catch it all, but I do want to get maybe a little bit of this so that I can add uh, maybe some dimension to some extra little pieces. Let's see. I want to see if I can capture this little piece right here. Let's see what that does. Let's see if I can get it to mold on both sides and get that texture on both sides. You don't hear nothing. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. How are you, sweetheart? So um, let's see what it does. If we can get it to kind of um, take that shape. I do see some of it extruding out of there. And I think that that's what's cool also. It's kind of like, you know, it's plastic that you can play with. Who doesn't like to um, get different things out of plastic? So you get the whole entire night, and I love it. It catches all the details, and I mean all of the details. So super, super cool. Let's go ahead and play with some Prima. And this is the only Prima mold that I have. Yeah, I got to get some more. Because now that I found this, I definitely got to make, like, all different kinds of stuff. And let's, um, let's pick a key. Let's make this one right here. Yeah, I just got really kind of, like, upset because all of my keys were breaking. There we go. All of my keys were breaking and I was like, no. 
Why are my keys breaking? And like with my um, polymer clay pieces, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but once I once I applied them to some of my projects, like with time, they fell off. I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys, um, but they fell off. And I was like, what the heck? I'm so happy that I didn't send that to nobody because how embarrassing would that be that um, you're making, you know, stuff and you're giving it away. And then the next, you know, things fall apart and they break and things fall off like. I was like, no. So with these keys, um, you can actually go around the spaces and not fill in the background. Um, or you can fill the whole thing in. It's up to you. I'm going to fill the whole thing in, but I've also done it without filling in the whole thing. So it's completely up to um, your style, you know, what you want to do. Now, the only thing that you can't use this is, is like plastic molds, like, you know, plastic sticks to plastic. So a uh, general rule, just don't apply it to plastic. And if it goes over your thing, just push it back down. You just kind of move it around and see uh, where, where you're needing, what you're needing. And just go filling it in. The pen does the work for you. You just have to kind of maneuver it around where you want it to fill in. I think I need a little bit more right here. And I'm going to stop it. And then just make sure that everything went into exactly where I needed it to go. And if you got to add a little bit more, then you can still do it. Like let's say you missed the spot, then go right into it. It'll fill it right in. And if you have like those kinds of tools that can work with um with these kinds of things, like you know, like those molding tools and stuff like that, then you can use that too. Let's go in with for this key now and fill this one in. Yeah, they have, um, I saw one brand that has it in pink, blue, um, silver, well, not silver, but like gray, um, and they have it in white, but you can get them. They have all different kinds of colors. They have all different kinds of colors. And I think the next thing I'm going to do is probably the dress form and... Either the dress form or maybe, yeah, I think the dress form. I'll do the dress form. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll start working on the canvas a little bit. Maybe it's dry by now. There's nothing better than creating one thing and then being able to move on to the next step, like, right away. Like, I'm a very, I, I guess, an anxious kind of crafter. Like, when I'm creating something, like, I just go, go, go. Um, sometimes I don't want to stop until it's done because the anxiety of the curiosity of how it's going to look is too much for me to bear. <laughs> so I can't stop once I go. Um, and sometimes I don't have those pieces, but I have a mold. Um, but then making the molds, you know, making the piece with the other products sometimes takes too long. So you still, you still have a little bit of time to go ahead and play with it um, and get everything in. You can also, if you have too much on one end, you can kind of maneuver it to go in the direction that you need it to kind of go. So it's soft enough that it'll have a little bit of movement in there for you. I didn't fill it in with enough. <laughs> I didn't put enough in it. I only put a little bit. I should have put more. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another one while this is drying. Let me see what uh what else do I want to incorporate into this. So what do you guys think? Um, 
the dress form, right? I should do the dress form. I could add the dress form like right there with some wings. Um, or the only other one that I have that I could possibly do something like this is this little fairy that I have right here. So either the fairy or the dress form, what do you guys think? The flower. I have a couple different, a couple different flowers. And also you can use those are like really thin ones. Like I have, um, I have a really thin, very thin kind of mold, which I hardly get to use if I can find it. I hardly get to use it because it's so thin. Um, that literally is almost impossible. Like you could get the impression with the clay, but it's almost impossible to make something usable out of it. And I got it from eBay and I thought it was a bigger kind of mold. I don't know where I put it. Where's my bag? Where's my bag with all the other pieces? Um, oh, it's right here. It's this one right here. And this thing is so stinking cute, you guys. It's a bunny rabbit and it's hanging by its ear because it's drying. And it's on uh, a line with little clothes pins on top of it. And it's got like little stars and like all these cute little things happening. Super cute. A pain in the you know what to try to mold this in any way, shape, or form. Now I can actually go into it and make the little bunny rabbit. Like let me show, let me show you guys. I can actually go into it and make the bunny rabbit. Um, really no problem to do it. I'm gonna skip this part. So I have to work more on that. Um <laughs> So I'm going to do the little bunny rabbit, and I was trying to do one of these before. Let it just get green. It'll get green in a second. It cools down by itself. And the tip is ceramic, too. So the, the tip always stays hot. The minute that the tip gets cool, um, because you haven't used it, it'll automatically kind of reset itself. And you'll also notice with the plastic, too, like once the plastic is solid, um, you can tell that it's solid. While it's still kind of wet, it has a different kind of color to it. It has like a certain level of translucency. Once it's dry, it doesn't, it's not translucent anymore. Okay, it's green. So I'm gonna go right into, let me go right in the bigger, right in the bigger area. Right here. And again, don't worry so much about going over the edges because you can fix that with a little bit of a little push in the right direction or a little tool or a pick or even like a toothpick or something that you might have. So I went ahead and just kind of pushed my bunny into place. And then again, just kind of pushing everything kind of where it goes. Like you might want to have yourself like a, for something teeny like this, like maybe a little toothpick or something that you can kind of um, move the edges, you know, right where they need to be. But super, super cute. This bunny is adorable. Oh, Blue's good. He's in the living room with his babysitter. I.e. my daughter. <laughs> He's over there with her. He just ate a little while ago. So now he's in sleepy mode. I'll bring him over in a minute. once, um, So you guys can meet him.
So I'm working a little bit on this here and there. Just so that I make sure that um, I feel everything in just right. Mainly I'm gonna focus on just that little um, line that kind of connects it. Again, you could just push it into place. It's cool enough to the touch that you can kind of, um, you know, touch it a little bit. Just don't go too crazy. Oh, I got it stuck on my nail. I got it stuck on my nail. That sucks. So yeah, maybe don't stick your nail into it. Maybe don't stick your nail into it. It doesn't stick to the silicone finger protectors. It doesn't stick to silicone at all. So this is why it works very well with the silicone um, molds. Yes. But the teeny tiny ones, right? So I'm gonna let this cool down. You guys wanna meet Blue? Let me go see if he's awake. I'm gonna go get Blue, I'm gonna let this dry. And then I think we can start, I have enough pieces here between everything. Oh, I still have to make the dress. You know what, let me make the dress form real quick. Um, let me let me make the dress form real quick so I can leave that kind of drying. And then I'll go and get my, my baby Blue so you guys can meet him. So I'm just gonna fill this in all the way through and through. Oops. Let's get that going in there. And they have, um, some of them even have like different size tips. So you can get more extrusion, more plastic coming out or even thinner plastic coming out, depending on what you want. So they have different type tips um, that do like different things. I've just had so much fun playing with this toy. And I think you guys will have a blast with it too. Especially when you start realizing that you can pretty much mold anything and make a mold out of almost anything. Like you can literally grab one of your cups and just wrap this around enough. Once it dries, you can pull it right off and you can start making all different kinds of things. Um, like it really becomes a situation where the imagination really has no limit. So for larger pieces, it does take a little bit of time. Again, also depending on how thick you want it. And what you want is just the initial impression that it won't take that much time at all. Um, but if you're really looking to make a nice solid piece, like I'm trying to make this really nice solid and dimensional, then it's gonna take a little bit of time uh, to get it all filtered. Okay. 
So now I'm just going to push it into place and just make sure that all my edges, all my um, little areas are nicely filled in. Like I missed the area right here. So I'm going to fill that in real quick. And then you just let it dry for like a minute or two and then it'll be dry. So super, super cool. And if I need any pieces while I'm working on my canvas, I could just make them really, really quickly. So let's see how my little rabbit came out. Ta-da. So you see as thin as this little space is, I mean, you guys can see that's like a hair. It's like a hairline. Am I showing this probably? Where's my camera angle? As thin as the little cavities are, I mean, that's like you can hardly even see it on the camera. Let's see. Maybe it being on black. It's too bright in here, right? I could hardly even see it. It's either too bright or too dark. I'm always having an issue with the lighting. But there's a really thin um, kind of cavity right here, like super, super, duper thin. It's like a, a string. And I was able to get into that and pretty much mold that whole thing out and get my little piece out of it. Super delicate. Super, super delicate. And again, plastic, so it falls. You did this with like a resin piece or something like this and you let this fall. Bye-bye, Charlie. Bye-bye, Charlie. All right, so let me go get my kitty cat blue so you guys can meet blue. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Let me move these things to the side so he doesn't think that it's candy. Not that cats can taste sugar, but you never know. You put this kind of like right over that. <sighs> Look, you guys, it's blue. It is blue. That's his name. His name is Blue. He's a rescue. He was found in the street, and now he has a home. Say hello to the people. Say hello. Say hello. Look at his fat little belly. It's like he swallowed a ball. Say hello. I know it's hard for you guys to probably see his face. <laughs> but yes, he's super adorable. He's so loving, too. You're so lucky to have found him. And I'm sure he's lucky to have found us. <laughs> but yes, super, super adorable. Kitty cat blue. My daughter loves him to pieces. She literally doesn't let anybody know or get nowhere near him when she's around. He's like inhuman. He's like about, I would say like six weeks, give or take. About six weeks old. And he eats like there's no food in the next five minutes. He eats like crazy. Right, Blue? You eat like crazy. Now say bye. Say bye, Blue. Look. Look up here. What you looking at? Oh, you see wires. I know. All right, you guys. Let me go get Blue back. And then let's get going with today's art project. Oh, now you want to meow? Now you want to meow? Angie, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yes. So I'm a proud fur baby mama. <laughs> yes, I am. I know the angles are off over here today. I don't know what's going on. Let's see. The angles are off, but I am gonna have like videos about him soon, so you guys will get to see all of his shenanigans moving forward. That's for sure. So we have our pieces, and there's a little bit of white residue from the clay on um, the paper clay that I use with that, but. They don't bend. They're completely, completely straight. They dry in a few minutes. Completely straight. These things right here, if you get any little um, plastic hairs, it's real super simple to get off. Um, if you do it nice and, you know, you take your time doing it, you won't get none of that. But yes. My dress form is complete as well. You can see all the detail on that. Super, super awesome, you guys. Like, honestly, I've tried it all. I've tried um, porcelain. I made it myself. Um, I've tried the paper clay now. I've tried the the other one as well, the, um, what's it called? Um, polymer clay. I've tried that one as well. And they all have their ups and their downs. I like... Um, I like the porcelain because you can make it yourself at home. Paper clay, you can also make at home. So that's pretty cool too. So if you ever, you know, run out, you can always make more. Um, they all have, you know, their ups and their downs. So far, I can't really find a downside to this besides the fact that eventually you're going to run out of plastic and it might be, it might be when you're like mid casting. Um, <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen, but yes. So then all you have to do pretty much is just paint them, just hold them up and then paint them and add them in to whatever you're going to add them. If you're going to make embellishments out of them, then you can go ahead and make your embellishments. As you can see, even this lays pretty flat. These are usually the pieces that will curve on you as they're drying. Like they tend to curve up. So the mold is facing down on the mold and the little legs will tend to like kind of pop up like this. Um, unless you put something heavy on top of them. That's not really the case um, when you're using the plastic. So any questions, any questions? <laughs> While class is in session. Yes. Well, this one doesn't smell at all. Like it has no smell at all. So maybe you were using the other plastic. This one is the P, uh, the PCL, um, the PCL type filament. It has no, no smell at all. I mean, none. You don't smell nothing. The gun, um, the, the pen, when you first, first use it for the very first time and it, it heats up, you will smell like a little bit of iron, I guess, as it's, you know, being used for the very first time. But as of this point in time, and I've used it like a whole bunch of times and with all the different plastics, I haven't smelled the pen again. So I think that was just a first use um, type thing. And I, I make a statement about that when I do the video too, because I smelled it a lot. I was like, okay, it doesn't smell like plastic. It just smelled like, like iron a little bit, like battery almost. But it was just the fact that it was being used for the first time. What am I going to bring what to the store? <laughs> I always wanted to play with resin. Resin is that one thing that I haven't played with, but I have heard stories, you know, from people that have dealt with it and, um, you know, just about how it can break and stuff like that. Like even Jana was telling me how hers, um, you know, it can break. So, so far this is easy enough and I can get this cheaply enough that I don't really worry about it. Um, I made a whole bunch of pieces and I still have enough plastic to go. And I still have enough packs to last me a while. And I have them in pretty much almost every single color, including skin tone. So what I have to do now is I have to get some more molds. <laughs> I have to get some more molds and some more plastics. Because I kind of stopped buying molds um, because I was having like a hardship. Um, again, they cracked this, that, and the third. So I was like, ugh. And then my other pieces were kind of like getting crazy on me. So I just kind of gave up a little bit on buying molds, but I'm back at it. I'm back at it. 
What happened to the... Ooh, do I have autofocus on over here? Let me see something, you guys. I think I have autofocus on my camera. Let me see if I can take that autofocus off. Let me see. Hmm. I don't think I could do anything with this to be while it's on. Hmm. That's odd. Auto focus. Let's see if that'll work a little bit better. Yes. I took the autofocus off, so hopefully it won't do that weird stuff no more with zooming out of the picture. Um, hopefully it didn't do that too long. I just noticed. I have that too. I have the air dry. But when it comes to small bits, it cracks on me. Not only that, I notice that it doesn't get a perfect, perfect impression every single time. Sometimes it does, not all the time. So let's create something, you guys. Yes. Let's get our mixed media on. What are we going to do? What colors are we going to go for today? So we're doing shabby. So let's stick with the shabby. Um, shabby? Do we want to do shabby? Let's see. What am I inspired to do? Let's see. Let's see how I lay some of this stuff out. And see what I can more or less come up with. Um, do I want to use this key or the other key? Something like that. Maybe, maybe, yes, yes, I have. I've added more water to the um, to the clay. This is the little piece that I have left over from the other pack. I've added more water to the clay um, and then, you know, uh, re-needed it again and tried it that way, it cracked. Um, I've also gone in with a little spray bottle and sprayed on it so that it can go like a little bit of water in the crevices and then kind of smooth it in there and it cracks. Like I've tried so many different things. Um, like, uh, and again, I'll still use it. I got like three packs of it. <laughs> I'm going to still use it, but I think I'm only going to keep, I'm going to use that mainly for big, like big, thick pieces. Um, I think that those hold better than the smaller ones do. For some reason, the small ones just don't hold right. It just don't hold right with me. I don't know. It could be just me, but something like that. All right, Deb. Thanks for stopping by. But I do try. I mean, I, I've tried. I've tried all the methods. I spent, like, I don't even know how long with Janet try, trying to figure this out because I kept screaming. I'm like, it's cracking on me. Every single time I go check it, it's cracked in a new place. Like, what the heck? And she suggested, add water, add this, add that. Like, and I'm over here doing all of it, and I'm still, like, going crazy. I'm still losing my dang mind. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what I add on here. Like, I have an assemblage of all different kinds of, you know, I have other ones, like, these are all the ones that I made with the paper clay. These are all the ones that I made with the paper clay. So, like, I have, and I like, I like the texture of it. I really love how it feels. So, like, I have, you know, it has, I want to be like, yes, so bad. But the fact that so many of my keys kept breaking and even some of my keyholes broke, I was just like, what the heck? And I didn't even do them thin. Like, I did them, I did them really thick, and they still kind of broke. 
that's the part that I kind of like don't understand why it did that. Like why it kept breaking. Um, I'm gonna need my glue gun. Even though I'm virtually out of glue, I should have enough to at least glue some of these pieces down and then I'll get to work. Or it's, yeah, or something is wrong with the clay like Janet was saying. I bought it online, so I don't know how long they had it in storage for. I didn't get it fresh from the store, um, which could be part of the problem right there. Because I don't know how it's supposed to feel. I just know that it feels it feels a little drier than what the others, you know, feel like. But I expected it to feel somewhat dry because it's paper. So I kind of expected that. But I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm going to add going to add different stuff in here. I'm going to add some different stuff in here and see what I come up with. I think maybe a piece of this piece of this fabric. So like I you know, I'm still going to play with it. I'm still going to try to figure it out because something's got to give, right? I got to something's got to come up at some point in time. Then I might have to do something. Maybe I just have to have a little bit more patience for it. But like I would try and you know getting those getting those keys out of there is not as simple as just like pushing it out because if you push it out and you put too much pressure on it, then it cracks, right? If you're like trying to flex the mold so that it kind of pops out of its place, it cracks. If you're gently trying to lift it up from a certain angle and just gently trying to lift it up, you it can still crack. So like Ay, babe. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? But I do try. I just want like a piece. I'm gonna add some pieces. Some pieces here and there, whatever little bits I kind of pull off. I'm gonna glue them down. I need to turn that on. I'm only gonna use the hot glue for my pieces, but in the meanwhile, I'm gonna try to see if I can kind of get some of those to kind of um, get some little pattern going on there and see what I want to do with it. I like how this kind of sits on there. So maybe, maybe I'll add this like up here somewhere. I'm gonna keep trying though, because God knows I don't quit easy. Hi, Patricia. So we'll see, we'll see. I haven't given up faith. I'm still gonna play with my um all my different clays and polymers and all that stuff. I'm still gonna play with them because I like I like how they, you know, I like the stuff that they produce. Um my whole thing with this is just execution wise. Um the level of timing that it takes for you to actually produce a piece, how fast you can use it. Um and somewhat, I guess, cost effectiveness, because I think your initial kit is probably gonna cost you a little bit only because you're gonna have to buy the pen and you're gonna have to buy the filament. So depending on where you're buying it, what brands you're buying, if you're buying generic or if you're buying name brand, those prices will vary. Um, but I think refill wise, when it comes to refilling, refilling um, the pen, I think that that'll be real nice. You know, that'll be nice and cheap. So um, I think that that'll be pretty cool there. So I'm thinking something like this. I'm gonna put this other piece here. Let's see how I use this. So one up and one down. No, I want this. I want these both down. Yes. Okay. And I'm probably gonna paint these over again. I just painted these to show, um, you know, what they look like and stuff. I'm gonna adjust all this entire thing. And I have two keys here. I have two of the same keys. Yeah, I do. So 
thinking I'll do something like that. And then I'll, I'll probably add like little something or the other little trinkets, flowers or something. Let's see what else I add on here. Yeah. And I'll, you know, you can get into you can get into small little bits like really really easy. Um and know that you know for sure that when you put that in to those small little tiny crooks like you're going to be able to get your you know that detail out. You it's a gamble sometimes when you're pushing in the clay and when you're pushing in other things if you're actually going to get that little tiny spot. Um it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. Um, I got to actually, I'm going to glue this, this down first. So let me grab some glue. Let me grab some glue, you guys. And get this glue out. I got to get this glue out of here. Um, to do the room. Ah, beautiful. Right there. Let me just um, poke a hole through my, through my glue real quick and get that kind of going. Um, I don't need it to stick everywhere right now. I just want it to stay down enough so that I can, I know that my fabric is down right there. I'm going to glue it better once um, I move forward with the project with the actual canvas. I just want it to be stuck on right there in that center piece. Yeah, because the packs, um, the box, they range from like six bucks and all the way up. So again, it depends how many feet you're looking to get. Um, but you can get a lot, a lot, a lot of pieces out of these packs right here. Like, you get a whole bunch of resin pieces out of that. Right there. And if you want to get the other one, the other filament, um, then you can just use those to make, like, dimensional pieces. Like, you can make little trees. You can make mushrooms. You can make all different kinds of actually dimensional things that you can incorporate into your art. And it kind of saves you too from having to buy the packs in the store, like the packs of six for like five, six, seven bucks and even more. If you can make them yourself out of the same material, more or less, right? Because it's all plastic. Some of them are metal, granted, um, but it's all mostly plastic and you can make a plastic piece of like a metal piece. It's just the paint that you use on it, right? So um, overall... I think then you can do a lot. Ow, ow, ow. Burn the heck out of my finger. I forgot to put on my finger protectors, you guys. Yeah, most likely. Most likely it was the first time usage. Um or I literally got glue all over my thing. Thank God that the resin, um, the silicone glue comes right off because it's not plastic. So it comes right off. So let's glue that down. Let's leave that like that. Once this is nice and set, I'm, go I'm gonna go into it with what I want to add for that. It's raining. Oh, it started raining. Yikes. I gave myself a boo-boo, you guys. I have a feeling this is going to turn into a blister. Burn the bejesus out my finger. Where's my finger protector? Never leave home without it. All right. Oh, my finger, my finger. All right, so. Gotta get some of these little blue bits off. 
the only thing is that like if you use something like this like you can't go over with your heat tool so like if you're drying your canvas or whatever you're using like you can't go over with your heat tool and think that um it's not gonna melt because it melts in very low temperature so it'll definitely melt I just hope it'll stick. I haven't used it in a piece of art yet. I gotta stick my finger in a tomato. Y'all, I burned the heck out of myself and it hurts to even put the thing on. It hurts less when I put the little hat on it. Come on, glue. I don't know why I thought it would be okay to put my finger in the hot glue. Yes. I'm gonna have to do that for sure. It's white. It's white. It turned white on me. Where's my little needle thing? It feels okay as long as I don't touch it. <laughs> Speaking about low temperatures, right? And then I burn myself with the glue. <clears throat> Ain't that something? And right on my pointer, right on my pointer finger. Where's my little bag? I gotta pull out another glue stick. I am virtually out of glue sticks. So I'm gonna end up with two different colored glue sticks because I'm out, I am out. But it's okay because I'm gonna end up covering this with gesso anyway. You're a bad glue stick today. You're a bad glue today. So overall, I'll be interested to see how this is gonna more or less hold with um, with using um, glue sticks with it. I want to see if it'll hold better than the um, than the other clay, not the paper clay, because I know the paper clay will hold, um, but the other clay, the polymer clay. Polymer clay gives me a headache sometimes. Trying to glue that thing down. That's when I think as long as you're making good contact, you'll be all right. Okay, so it does hold with the glue. So that'll work for me. Let me get some little flowers and stuff. See what else I can add in here. Oh, let's add some circles. Let's add some circles. Just adding different little, different little things here. This is all gonna be painted. And this is more for fun than anything else. This is just me playing around and seeing like, okay. Putting my theory to the actual test. Okay. 
It's gonna turn into a blister anyway, girl. I'm beyond that point already, I think. But let me go. Let me go get some toothpaste and I'll be hard headed. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I've never had an accident before while live streaming. And I've never been burned before with my glue gun. I've burned my fingers slightly. And I've never burned myself to the point of almost catching a blister. First time. I'm usually not that clumsy. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened today. So I put some Usually when I get like, I've burned myself before, like not with this stuff, but like, like when I'm fiddling in the kitchen and usually if I put my finger in the tomato, like in a tomato right away, I, I don't end up with no blister, but we had the tomato for salad today. <laughs> so I don't know what tomato. Uh, otherwise you will see me right now with my finger in a tomato, um, <laughs> trying to keep the hope alive. So let me see. Let me get a piece of tape here. Cause we gotta go industrial on this one right here. Get a little piece of tape and I'm gonna hook this boo-boo up in two seconds. I feel so weird. I never get injured. So weird. My fat finger now, I'm fat finger Carmen. <laughs> ah, my boo boo, boo boo. <laughs> got a boo boo on my finger. <laughs> yeah, you gotta laugh. You gotta laugh. You gotta laugh. What else you gonna do? I'll cry later in private. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to what we was doing. Let's get back to this, you guys. So I have these circles here. I'm thinking I can add some of these circles somewhere around there. I just hope it lets me use my tools because it is my trigger finger <laughs> that kind of got um, burned here. So I'm hoping that I can still somehow um, manage. All right, so we got some circles. Okay, circles inside of circles. What is what is this trickery? What are you guys trying to do to me today? Drive me completely insane. Where, where was this thing connected? I think I see it. There you go. Thank God I got my glasses on. All right, that'll work. There's really no theme for this. As usual, you guys know how I get down. All I did today was, like I said, I'm gonna play with my 3D pen. I'm gonna play with some molds. And um, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this out, which is 
everyday everyday stuff that we have at home. Let me get this big one out of here. It's got these little circles everywhere. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Do I want to put this anywhere? No, I don't. But I love buttons. Do I want to put buttons? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. So let's see. What am I going to use to stick those? Maybe I'll stick it in the gel coat. And then I'll just cover it with heavy gel medium. And heavy gel out. It's my chest so. So let's see. I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick them to the gesso and then I'm gonna stick them to the medium. And we'll see how this kind of goes. Make sure that these pieces are not going to come off. Oh, they're stuck on well. They're good to go. They're good to go. I know it just sucks when you burn yourself. It really, really does. I don't like it. I feel like the tools are fighting back. I feel like the supplies are yelling at me. I'm gonna start by just weighing this right here. And I'm not used to not using that finger. I'm a righty, so I use that finger a lot for gripping my pencil, my brushes, pretty much everything. Now, the only issue with this is that you have to let it air dry. So I'll see how far I get with this, if it'll dry quick enough. I'll go probably making some more um, mulch or something or making some little flowers or something. Figure something out so that we can um, pass the time while this hopefully dries. I'm sticking the fabric down with the gesso itself. I added a little teeny bit of glue, but mostly I'm just gluing it down with the gesso. I'm usually not that accident prone, to be honest with you. I'm usually the type that, um, you know, I'm the rescuer, not the rescuee. <laughs> I'm usually the one running around with band-aids and this and that, uh, fixing everybody else. It's very rare when it's me. And especially live. I've never hurt myself live. Like, no. And what's the worst part of it is that I had the finger protectors right there. Had I been wearing adequate protection, this would have never happened to me. I don't know what color scheme I'm gonna go with this. Um, I don't know if I wanna go like rustic and vintage. I kind of like the idea of vintage a little bit, like just going with browns and just dark colors. I've been working in pink for like the past couple of weeks and I'm like pinked out <laughs> almost, I'm almost there. I love it and then it's like, oh my goodness, it's just so much of it. Even when I try to do my art journaling, it's like all pink everywhere. I'm on pink overload. Okay. So we're getting there. Almost there. Almost there.
Okay. So I got most of this on there. I feel like it's going to be a little bit blah, blah, but I might, um, once I add like everything that I'm going to add on here, I might go into it with like little pieces of paper or little other details here and there and see um, like what I want. So I think I'm going to go in with the heavy gel instead. Just add a little bit of heavy gel here and there and place some of those rings around it. Um, so this is heavy gel. So go into that with like some of that and just kind of place them different piece, different places. I know, right? Doesn't that suck? I literally have like a little medic bag with like all kinds of stuff. And whenever it's about me, I never think to get it. But let one of my kids need something and I'm here running for dear life all over the place. Give me the bag. Give me the bag. <laughs> now <I'm one. laughs> but now when it comes to me, it's always like that. Now, heavy, um, heavy gel is supposed to be really, really good for um, gluing down heavy embellishments, which this is not so much of a heavy embellishment as it is just an awkward um, kind of shape because it's such a, it's a hollow ring. I'm going to call this piece Infinity. Because circles go round forever. And if you can have wings, you can soar anywhere. So I'm going to call this piece infinity. Plus, if you have keys, then you can unlock every door. Right? So literally, you can go on for infinity just walking through doors. As long as you have the right key. <laughs> Yes, it never does, girl. It's the worst. It's the worst. It's like a gift and a curse all at once, right? Um, all right, so we have some of that. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and use um, some of... I think this is going to come out really cool once it's all done. And actually, this is the paper one, so I'm going to go ahead and probably snap this. Oh, easy peasy. Snap that right in half. Let me go ahead and... And you know what I'm going to do? All those broken pieces that I have there, I'm going to use up all those broken pieces. Why not? I have a whole bunch of broken pieces. That What's the point of me hoarding them and keeping them safe? <laughs> I might as well use them. So they're gonna all go in here. They're gonna all go into this piece right here. I might as well. I'm gonna turn this glue gun off for right now because me and you right now, no estamos en buena. Tú y yo tenemos problema. I don't throw you in a tub of water because I need you. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, because I have like broken like. This is what got me upset. I got like a whole bunch of broken pieces of, um, you know, other little mold, paper mold that I was doing. They didn't all break. So I don't want to sound like they all broke. They didn't all break. I have a lot of good pieces too. But sometimes you, what you love about the molds is those tiny little pieces. And then when they're broken, it's like, oh, that's so stressful. So I'm going to use all those little pieces that I have. Because I might as well. This is going to be full, full, full of texture. You might as well, you might as well incorporate them, right? You might as well. Otherwise, they're just going to be going to waste there. I don't want to throw them out. So we'll see what I come out with. Because somehow I always seem to wing it. I don't know how you guys don't ask me. 
But somehow I always manage to wing it. And the things always come out looking like, what? I don't even know how that happens. And I'm not tooting my own horn here. But somehow it just happens. <laughs> I don't know. I can't explain it. But it just does. So if push comes to shove and I can't share what this looks like today, um, because it's got to dry. I, it's, I have too much plastic here. I'm not going to risk heating it up and then just all of this going to, you know, going to the you know where. So what I'm going to do is at least, in the very least, I'm going to um, fill in the canvas today and then let everything kind of dry because it's going to need its time to dry. And we'll see it. If anything, I'll finish it tomorrow. I'll probably come back live tomorrow if, that's, if that works out for me. Um, I'll probably come back live tomorrow and then finish it off then. Yes, I am. Me and the glue gun right now, we're not friends. I'm not one for enemies, but hmm, you hurt me. And once you hurt me, I can't. I can't. I'll never see you the same again. So right now, we have problems. Right now, we have problems. Let's see. Let's see. I think this is going to come out super cool, though, all in all, even with my little broken pieces. I think this is going to come out super, super cool. Let's put that half on that ring. Um... It's been a while since I did one of these like assemblage type pieces where I'm just adding a whole bunch of stuff to a canvas. I love doing those. Let's see. Can we add you there? I think we can. That looks look super cute. Right on the key. Right on the key. <laughs> right on the key. I'm going to have keys going from every direction. All of these broken pieces. And I might, if this comes out nice, really, really nice, I'm probably going to give this away during the hop. I'll probably make this one of the prizes for the hop. I think that's what I'm going to do. Make this one of the prizes for the hop. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. I have one more. Where do I want to stick it? So I want to stick it there. I don't really want to stick it there. I have a key here. I have a key there. Where do I want to put this dang key? On her head? No. Ugh. Where am I going to put you? I'll stick you here on the side. Let me get some more. Some more of that. Put you right there. Okay. All right. All right. This is coming together. This is coming together. Yes, it is. So I have paper clay pieces here. I have some paper clay pieces and um, some plastic pieces, some metal pieces. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some of those little art stones that you sent me because I might as well. I haven't done a mixed media canvas in a while, so I might as well add some of these somewhere. Let's shake it up a little bit so that I'm getting um where 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 where. Maybe like right there. Maybe like right there. Let's 
We'll see kind of what happens here. These things feel like Rice Krispies treats. Like the Rice Krispies cereal. Yes. I know. Get a piece of get a piece of cardboard here so I can go into the little nooks and cranny in the back and get the tiny little ones. Get some of the tiny little ones. I think this is too big. Take this one out. I'm gonna let it dry first. I got too many big ones in one spot. Let's get some more of those. Let's get some of those like down here somewhere. Let's go there. Let's get this one like up here somewhere. I think that's pretty good. Just add a little bit of thin, maybe a little bit of thin ones right here. Maybe a little bit right over here somewhere. Let's see. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. All the small pieces set in the bottom. <laughs> Let's just put a little bit right there. And a little bit right there. Let's grab you right here. And put you there. Let's grab you right there. My gosh. I think that'll be cool right there. And do, 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 do I want to add any more anywhere else? No. I think I'm good with that. Yeah, they're really cool. I like how they feel. Because it's almost like pumice. I don't know if it is pumice stone, but that's what it feels like. It feels like that pumice type of stone. Um... I'm trying to see what else I can add on here. I love to see. Okay. I have little tiny beads, so I'm going to add some of these tiny little beads that I have in here. Tiny little beads. My finger hat keeps coming off. Stay on finger hat. Stay on finger hat. Where is the rest of it? The green one. Tiny, tiny little seed beads. I think with the green. here and a little bit right there this is just to add um little bits of texture here and there i just don't want to waste all my art stones i'd rather waste these <laughs> i'd rather waste these and then once i go ahead and um this all kind of dries then i'll go over all of this once more with gesso um, and cover the pieces up once more, give it another hand. I have a little spoon somewhere around here. I just don't know where I put it. So I'm gonna add a little bit, just a little bit of these little beads here and there. A little bit here and there, just to give it a little bit of texture. 
see wherever it captures it captures wherever it grabs it grabs and this is all going to be painted white but once i go over with some of the metallics like i do then it'll start capturing all those little bumps and stuff like that will all capture um some of those metallic uh you know little grooves and stuff it'll look nice and cute Look nice and cute right there. Where else can I add some more of these? I want these all kind of like in there. Um, let's add some right here. Let's add some right in there. I just want to fill this canvas up with a lot of texture. I want there to be a lot of um, stuff happening. Even though there's not much happening, even though there kind of is, it's kind of weird, um, but it's okay. I'm okay with weird, as long as it serves a purpose. And where else, where else can I add a little bit more? I think, Maybe along the edges in the bottom. Give it like a nice little border here. And then I'll probably come back tomorrow and um, either I'll share with you guys the finish from um, the finished result of what this looks like once I've, I've done it all because tomorrow is the hop uh, video day. And I also have some entries that I got to put up that I received, um, so I'll try to get it in tomorrow. If not, probably sometime within the, within the week. Like now that I come to think about it, if there's one negative thing that I could say about the plastics, because I know that I've been just giving it so many rave reviews, is the fact that you can't heat it up. <laughs> you, can't, you can't heat dry it. So when you're applying this to like a mixed media application, the paper clay, you can heat dry. The polymer clay, you can, go over it with the heat tool, it won't affect it. But if you go over this with the heat tool, it will warp uh, your mold. It, it's gonna do it, I know it's gonna do it. Because if it melts on low temperature, um, it'll definitely change something on here. It might not like that too, too much. Right? But like what? Like if I'm gonna go into this and add like flowers and stuff like that, I think I'd rather add those after um, because then depending on whatever color scheme I end up going with, then I can go ahead and make those really pop out. Um, I think if I go into it and add more stuff to it now, as far as like, flowers or something like that. Like that's where my mind automatically goes. So it goes to flowers. But like if I was to do that now, I think that when I go paint it all um, and paint the whole thing with the gesso and stuff, like I'm going to lose a lot of, um, it's going to all look like one big mush, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking, but Like, I don't even know what else to add on here. Yeah, I'm gonna re it. I'm gonna re it because I have to cover up all the gold rings and stuff that I added on here. I have to cover those up. I don't even think a flower will look good on this at this point in time. I don't know. I 
I think on adding stuff, I've added pretty much, I think I've added everything that I could possibly add to this. Because like in these areas here, once I'm done and I've painted everything, my, my plan is to add stamping um, to some of the white, like the, the, the spaces that are really wide and I can actually get the stamp in there. I want to add some light stamping on there. I also have, um, I did stenciling on this canvas before I started today. So there's stenciling already going on here. It's like a snake skin um, type of uh, stenciling that this has going on. So there's already texture on that department going on. Um, I just don't know if I want to make this a light piece or a dark piece, you know, like really go dark with it. Um, so I think I want to go, I'm kind of debating. I, I don't want to go on the light theme because I have so many other pieces um, that I've created lately that are light as far as the shabby chic. So I'm gearing more towards doing something that's kind of vintage kind of dark even, maybe like a little grungy. Um, but I don't really have like um, other things that I can add to this that are grungy. But probably once I'm done, maybe I could go into it and add some chains um, or add different things to this, like add some chain pieces. Maybe I could do that now. Let me see if I find some chains that I could add on here. Maybe that'll look cool. Let me see if I find some. I should. Use maybe I can add some chain to it. So I'm gonna try to get a piece out of here that I can somehow uh, work with. Let me see. Let me grab some of these tools and see what I can do. Um, Just add like some pieces of chain here and there. Let me see. Let me see what I can come up with. That'll definitely give it like that grungy, kind of steampunkish kind of look. Um, some on the other side. So, let's see. I wish this thing would dry fast. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could finish this right now because I'm just like, ah. Oh. Once I start liking how something is looking, it's like the worst. It's the worst feeling when you have to wait for it to dry. And you can't finish it right away. That's the one thing that I don't like. I'm so impatient when it comes to this kind of stuff. This piece is a little small. I'm gonna grab another longer piece. That's like the worst. I'm super, super, super impatient. And um, I just hate, hate, hate having to wait. Waiting in general, I'm very impatient for waiting in general. It's kind of funny because I could have all the patience in the world with people. But if you tell me you're going to be at a certain time, I expect you to be there at that time. I can tolerate five minutes. I can even tolerate 10. But I can't tolerate half an hour. I can't tolerate, like, a ridiculous amount of time. Like, I need that to be, like, on point. I have all the patience in the world as long as I know that... It's coming or it's happening, but don't leave me there stranded and waiting. Like, what? And this is how I feel like art does. Like, 
it's like you don't know when it's gonna dry. <laughs> it doesn't give you a time. It doesn't tell you come back in five minutes. Um, you don't know. <laughs> it's the unknown that gets me. It's like what? And I'm going heavy on this on the heavy gel because I want it. I want to make sure that it sticks. I don't want it to kind of come off uh, mid range there. So let's see. Make sure that it kind of that it all gets its fair amount. You can also hot glue this, but I'm running out of glue. My glue stick situation is not working too well for me right now. I gotta buy more, which I will be shortly. But in the meanwhile, I'm kind of stuck uh, using this, which is fine. Okay, so I have that one. Let's add, let's add more. I know, right? It's like the worst. I'm super, super, super impatient. And again, I can have all the patience in the world for people. I really do. But when it comes to like stuff like that, like I can't, I can't. Like not knowing when. And I'm so antsy, and I'm like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. What, what, what? Chain the butterfly. Let's chain the butterfly instead. The butterfly is chained. I think that that'll work better. This finger hat is unreliable. It doesn't stay on. It is better than hot glue because you can keep working. Way better, but I got literally a glue stick and a half, girl. I'll never make it. I'll never make it. And at least this way, I can let it all dry and do its thing. And I don't have to go too, too bonkers with it. And I know it's not going to come off. No time soon, but yeah. If I would have had more glue sticks, well, we wouldn't be discussing waiting periods. It would just get done. And I could just always gesso over it and not even worry about it. It's not even about that right now. It's simply my lack of glue sticks. Because what happened is this, right? I had glue sticks. I usually have a plethora of glue sticks. But... What happened is, is that I literally um, got all excited because of my new kitten and I built it a house. I built it a house out of cardboard and it's got like four different compartments to it. And I had to hot glue everything because it was cardboard. And so now all my glue sticks went into that project. All of my glue sticks literally went into that project, so now I don't have no glue sticks. Now I have to go buy more. Because again, I get impatient. <laughs> I get impatient. And once I get impatient, it's, it's, a, it's a done deal. And once the kitty came home, I'm like, oh my God, I need to build it a playpen. Mind you, the kitten was so teeny, it didn't even poop on its own yet. And I'm like, I got to buy it. I got to make it a playpen. I got to do all of these things. And I literally built it a playpen. It's got its own little basket for it to sleep in. It's got its own little play area with things hanging from it. It's got a staircase that I built for it. It's got a slide. You guys don't even want to know. Like, I literally, I went OD. I went OD with my kitty cat blue. So now I'm out of glue sticks. <laughs> That's the price I have to pay. All right, so I added some chain there. And I think... 
Where else can I add some chain? I don't have much chain but um, so maybe this little section here, right? This little section there. Like that's coming off of that. No, I don't like that there. Um, maybe I'll just add those two. I think that'll be good enough for now. And then this will definitely be to like to be continued. Like um, I'll have to finish this. I have to let this dry and then come back and finish it off. I wish I would have had another craft ready, but I don't. I would have um, done something else in the meanwhile. But I don't really have nothing else ready to do, unfortunately. I was not all the way prepared for other crafts. I didn't think I was going to go this far, to be honest with you. Like, I prepared a canvas and everything because I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'll get a chance to do it. But I didn't think I was going to get this far. I thought for sure that it was going to be mostly a little bit of molding and just sharing with you guys that whole process and that whole thing. And then that's it. But no, <laughs> I always have to take it. I'm going to wrap it around the key it was next to. This key here. I don't think it reaches. It won't reach all the way around. It's too long, the key. It's too long. And this, I got all the stones on it, so I can't do it on that side. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that piece is too long. And I don't want to break another piece off. <laughs> I'd be hoarding some stuff, you guys. <laughs> some things like this, I got to hoard it. Because it's not an everyday, it's not an everyday thing. So I don't, I don't use them often. Only once in a while. And stuff is sticking, but it's going to take time for it to stick all the way. It don't matter if it's not it's not wrapping around. They're like a little key hat. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm so picky. I really don't like that. Um I really don't like that there. Um, let's see. How else can I do this? I kind of messed my stuff up with the spacing here, didn't I? So I would have said, um, let's see. Wow, that just looks off. I don't know. Here? Yeah, maybe I could just place it like right there. Right? Like next to that. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work right there. I gotta brush, wash my brush. It's getting hard. And if you guys deal with these kinds of mediums, you know, if you don't brush, wash these brushes quick is the point of no return after a second. It'll turn into a silicone spatula. Right there. That'll work.
That'll work. So now it's just a matter of letting this baby dry. And then, like I said, I'll try to come back tomorrow. Hopefully, if I have um, if I have time, you know, during the day, I'll come back at my usual time, like around 6 o'clock, which is normally when I come on. So hopefully, you guys will be free. And then we can finish this canvas together. Because I'm going to be adding way more stuff to this, most likely. Um, not sure exactly how much stuff, but I know I'm going to be adding way more stuff to this. And I'm finishing this whole thing up. So we'll see, we'll see. So I don't want to keep you guys here while I'm doing this, cleaning my brushes. Honestly, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, tomorrow's the shabby spring collection hop. And I hope that you guys will go and check it out. Check out all the wonderful ladies that are um, a part of this hop. We're almost done. Tomorrow's the third week. We still have two more weeks to go after this one. Super, super awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that now. I'm Tanya. I'm gonna I'm about to go clean the brush now. I was just getting some of the residue off to make it a little bit easier to really get in there. Um, I gotta go clean my hands too and take care of take better care of my little wounds here. But thank you all so much. You guys have an awesome awesome night. Me and my injured finger are gonna go um and clean some brushes and clean my desk and all of that good stuff. And hopefully I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye. Have a good night.